everybody. It's me, Aspen Rain Stars. Now, before you say anything, I know, I know, you're probably going, wait a second. Girl, you forgot your makeup. There's kind of a reason that I did this, and obviously I wouldn't just throw myself out here on YouTube without makeup for a reason. I usually don't let anybody see me like this, but that's kind of what I'm going to get to in this video. Um, so, I'm kind of losing my faith in humanity even more, in a sense. I hate to say that. I really do. Because I, oh, I'm very, I'm very positive and, and, positive? I'm a very positive person and like to think on the positive side and stay away from negativity. Negativity does nothing but bring you down. But throughout my transition, I was growing more, ex I felt accepted from people more so than I thought I was going to. So it was kind of giving me hope in a sense, like, wow, this really isn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. This is actually pretty easy and the struggles aren't near what I can conjure in my mind. Cause of course your mind goes a million different ways. You think of things all over the place. You don't, yeah. But so there's still a problem though, even though people have kind of restored my faith in a sense, still, in a sense, has not. What I'm getting at is this whole no makeup thing, the fact that I have to spend about an hour every morning to make sure that I look quote-unquote passable to everybody. No, I do not look 100% passable, even when I spend an hour and a half on my makeup and look perfect. I will still get picked out of a crowd. I'm trans. People are assholes. They're going to see me walking by and they're going to have to gawk and stare. But at least when I go through all of that and I do have all that, I have more confidence. So not that many people actually do catch on. I, so you make those odds from substantial down to minimal. And that's what I'm saying. If you don't wear makeup, then people don't look at you as passable. At first, I thought this was just like a deep fear of mine. Of course, every trans person is going to think that way and not want to do it. But I really wanted to get to the root of it because I'm all about facing fears. And I decided to go to the store. My fiance was laying in bed. She looked all cute. I didn't want to disturb her. So I gathered the kid and we went to go make breakfast, open the fridge and there's no eggs. Well, it's Sunday morning, like 930. So I mean, you want to have a lazy day. Most girls at the minimum, maximum, will maybe put some mascara on, which put mascara and blush on, but that's it. It's like, you know what? Let's test this. Let's face my fear and go in there without my makeup on, without doing everything that I do to help blend in and compare it to my normal experience to going to the store. So I pretty much look like you see me now. It was one of the most awkward experiences I ever had. It was so unbelievably uncomfortable for me. It, I've got really good peripheral vision, so I can see pretty much almost damn near behind me. No, not really, but I can see a lot. And I'm very aware of my surroundings just because being trans in this day and age can be dangerous. There's those bigoted assholes that have it out for us. No, knock on wood, I hope that doesn't ever happen, but I would rather be prepared for it to happen and be aware of my surroundings than be surprised by it. And so I'm able to watch all these people turn and glare and laugh and make, I can hear them talking to whoever they're with, commenting on, oh my gosh, what, oh, oh my gosh, can you believe it? And just being rude and inconsiderate. There's any girl can go dressed in whatever the hell they want to without their makeup on, looking like horrible, oh, looking like shit. You can see it, people at Walmart, and there's pictures to prove it. There's some people that dress weird, and you they won't bat an eye. I don't know. They're, everybody's allowed to have their lazy day. Me, on the other hand, I can't step foot outside of my house without spending at least 30 minutes to an hour on my looks, because if I 
don't do it, if I go out like this, then people are just more, and there's more chances of people being assholes, and it proved it with this trip. That's what I was trying to go to. So, it really makes me lose faith in humanity. Like I said, I hate, there's no other way to explain it, but I was so uplifted by how much I was accepted when I first transitioned and I go through all this and it's not going to stop me. I'm still going to do my makeup and try my hardest to blend in because it makes life so much easier if people don't instantly pick you out of a crowd and know you're trans and then stop and stare. And then a lot of people have trans people close to them. So yes, a lot of them are just curious, but it's still, you feel the stares and it gets you down. You hear the sassy little comments. It makes you want to just go hide in a hole. So in order for me to go out in public, you would, the world would prefer to see. So this is how I have to appear to the world in order for me to just step foot out of my door. Now, there's not a single girl out there in the world that cannot sit there watching this video and tell me that they have not had a lazy day and didn't put on all this makeup to go outside. Go to the grocery store, go get smokes, go get a cup of coffee, go return a movie, whatever it is. You can't sit there and tell me that there has not been one day in your entire life that you have not done that. Exactly. Silly, right? Girls do it all the time. Sometimes we need a day off. Doing this seven days a week is kind of a chore. Then there's those people that go, well, that's what you get for choosing to be trans. Ooh. Hold up right there. Nobody chooses to be trans. Like, it's not something that I just woke up one morning and was like, hmm, I think I'm going to be trans today. That sounds like something fun to do. Nobody's going to choose to be essentially socially awkward. Not social awkward. I mean, of course, social awkward comes. But socially shunned from everybody. When I went into the store to get eggs, and I was like I was just not a couple minutes ago. Well, 40-some minutes that you didn't have to see. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> but, like, even the checkout person, the checkout lady, the only words this lady said to me when I was checking out, not, hi, how's it going, I haven't, blah, 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 the only words was my total. I was trying to make conversation, she just head down, 2250 or whatever the total was, you know. But that's kind of my point. Just because I didn't look like this, she didn't say one word to me. I could go in there right now just like this, and I could talk up a storm to damn near anybody because most people don't. I blend in better. That's what I'm trying to get to. I shouldn't have to go through all of this just for you to socially accept me, for you to say, oh, hi, how's it going? Have a nice day. The things you say to every single other person in this world, doing your job, the things that you're supposed to do, you can't even muster that up just because I'm trans, which is essentially what it comes down to. It can't be because I'm a girl that wasn't wearing her makeup, because I'm guarantee she saw at least 50 of those just before me. So all there is is the fact that I'm trans. Oh, well, you shouldn't have chose that path. I hate hearing that. You're destroying the body God gave you. You shouldn't have chose to be trans. I didn't choose this. I did not choose this. I had a hard time dealing with it and accepting it. And it is a very hard struggle to go through. When I was going through puberty, little 13, 14 year old me, I absolutely hated it. This kind of goes into my next subject that not all trans girls have it, but gender dysphoria I suffer from gender dysphoria, dysphoria, get my words straight, I personally suffer from it horribly. I can't stand my body from the waist down. I never could. That's part of the reason that I knew I was trans, actually. I mean, growing up, 13, 14 year old boy, everybody's all big, macho proud, gotta show off, grr, I'm a man. Not me, I didn't really care, but it's because deep down inside, I really didn't like the idea of me turning into a man. In fact, I, I 
<laughs> used to go to sleep wishing that overnight I would somehow turn into a mutant because, you know, I was big into X-Men, Spider-Man, all this comic books, stuff like that. So I wish I could wake up with the power to shapeshift because the first thing that I would do when I could shapeshift was turn into the girl that I always wanted to be. It sounds silly. Yes, I know. But to a 13-year-old trans person that's going through puberty and having their body develop into something completely different than what they feel is right, it's the best you can do. I don't know. Yeah, it's silly. But <clears throat> I couldn't face it. I really couldn't. I had to keep that locked away. It couldn't happen. It's not that I had a horrible upbringing. I didn't. I love my parents. I love my mom. She's so supportive. It took her some time to get there, but she's very supportive and she just wants me to, to be happy. And that is key. I don't blame her for not knowing back then because I didn't really know either. Yes, I knew I wanted to be a girl, but I didn't know that was the cause of all my anguish, distress, my depression, suicidal thoughts and tendencies, and just in general, hating the world. It's hard to explain. But I don't resent my parents. I don't hate them. I, anything like that. They didn't know. I didn't know. There was no way the, the issue could have ever been addressed. I didn't really fully accept it until maybe like I was 28, 29 when I started figuring out that it was about 28 when I started thinking about it. It's like, you know, I'm so, it's not me. I don't like who I am. I'm miserable. No matter what I do, I'm still, that's there and I absolutely hate it. Which is also why I know I'm a lesbian because boy parts absolutely disgust me, okay? enough said. And that's the whole gender dysphoria thing, is the fact that I have to wake up every single morning into a body that does not match my heart, my soul, my mind, every ounce of my being on who I am is not male. And that part should have never been there. And so dealing with that on a daily basis, when I look like this, and I have to look down and I have to see that, it absolutely disgusts me to the point that I'm damn near tempted to grab a kitchen knife and then just go cut it off just so I never have to see it again. That's how much I hate it. That's what it feels like having gender dysphoria. You, no matter what, you're never happy with who you are because you can see it every time. I hate being naked. Ew, it it's disgusting. My fiance laughs at me, but she can't really blame me. She understands that I have the wrong body. Yes, time, money, I'm getting that corrected. I'm not dealing with this the rest of my life. I cannot wait until I'm able to get SRS, which things are in the work. Hopefully within the next year or so, I'll have my operation. I can actually truly live for me and be happy and be me. I'm going to be married, have a daughter. Oh. Honestly, life has truly gotten so much better since I transitioned. Like, I love it. I, I, I couldn't be happier. Nothing can, I've never have been happier, even though I've accomplished a lot in my life. I was happy when I published my first book. I was happy when I got the restaurant and owned that for a little bit. And then I was also happy again when I published my second book. I couldn't, I mean, it's who I was. I was able to express myself. But even all of those moments, everything that I've ever accomplished, becoming an accredited jeweler, all those feats pale in comparison to transitioning. Because transitioning has brought so much happiness, so much light, has brought my essence into me. And I'm finally living and smiling and enjoying life instead of being down in the dumps, being suicidal, and hating every single thing. Because I pretty much did. I didn't smile very much. I was going through a lot of hard times. And there's nothing you can really do about it besides accept it. Accept who you are, no matter what it is, whether it's trans, bi, gay, lesbian, any, anything. It doesn't even have to be through that stuff. If you're an architect, accept you're an architect and get to work. That was completely random, but we know that's 
kind of how I roll and especially how these videos roll, but that's really a subject I wanted to touch on is the gender dysphoria because a lot of people don't understand it because not all trans people have it. Some trans people are comfortable with their body and they will never get surgery and they don't have to worry about it. Personally, I hate my body from the waist up is good because, you know, tatas look nice. You know, I have no complaints there. Don't laugh at me. I know, I'm a dork, but whatever. <laughs> I was going to go off on this whole spiel about drag and performing as a transgendered person and how it makes me feel because you, when you're performing as a drag queen, everybody comes in there and they expect to see a man dressed as a woman, the very, very stereotypical drag queen. And being a trans lesbian drag queen that's a title. <laughs> um, not only am I different because I'm not a gay boy, I'm a lesbian, but exactly just that. I'm a girl, not a boy. So when I get associated with those categories, it kind of, I don't know, it doesn't really bother me, but it does eat me up inside a little bit to a degree. So, I don't know, it's different. But I've, the past four or five months, I've been trying something different when it comes to my performances. I've been putting more of my heart and soul into it when I go to the choreography and I want to portray a story when I'm actually up there performing. Granted, I have been doing a lot of more <clears throat> rock and roll, heavy metal type music because they're able to tell the story the way I want to. It's not some pop love song because that's not all life is about. Yes, life is love is very important in life. But that's not everything in life. There's a lot more things that everybody has to deal with than just love. So there's rock songs out there that I can really relate to and can portray a story and the dance and the choreography and everything. But sometimes it just feels that people don't appreciate what I'm bringing to the table. If that makes sense. I mean, I bust my ass for weeks choreographing things, figuring out what I'm going to wear, getting the makeup planned up, spending the money on the outfits and the makeup and getting ready to get up there on stage and it just seems like I don't I know people support me and people like me getting up there on stage and performing and they love seeing me put on these little things but when you see another queen get up there and kind of shake their hips a little bit not really do a whole lot I mean yeah they have a dance and stuff like that but they don't really do a whole lot that really impresses you, but yet they walk out of there with 20 to $70 per number when I'm doing everything that I can for maybe $7 a night. There's a point in time when I have to sit there and question myself, is what I'm doing, am I doing it right? Is there even a point to doing this anymore? I mean, no, I don't perform for the money. No, I don't do it at all for the money. I love getting up there and performing and putting my heart and soul into these performances and inspiring people just to accept who they are and to fight their inner demons, to do whatever they want to do. You can. It's all up here. That's why I do it. But at a certain... Oh, I can't breathe water. At a certain point in time, you're only spending money just to get up there and to inspire people while other people are making money just for shaking their ass. When I did the pop songs, I did a lot of Christina Aguilera and stuff like that. I would choreograph the dance routines and I pr made a lot more money doing that. So maybe I should just shift to the crowd and give the crowd what they want, which to a degree as an artist, that's what you have to do too. But also as an artist, it's a freedom of expression and you need to be able to express who you are and your unique individuality within the performance and what you're doing. That's what I've been doing, and I've been really feeling really connected with my songs, but then the audience doesn't seem to get it or like it, maybe? I don't know. I don't even know why I'm talking about this. Maybe I just wanted to rant and get it off of my chest because I've been thinking about it for a while. But I might just take a break, a little bit of a break, I'm sick of stressing over it and doing all this work just to feel this way, if that makes sense. Once I move to Colorado Springs, it's going to be a bigger city. It's going to be a different crowd. 
I'm gonna get back into it. It's I love performing. It's something I'm going to do. But taking a couple month break is probably not a bad idea. Figure out where I want to go. I mean, of course, I'm still gonna do my ninja princess stuff because what can I say? Girls with swords? Yes! Totally hot, especially badasses up there on stage kicking ass, and most people like watching those kind of numbers. And honestly, I love doing them, because it's kind of like cosplay mixed with drag, and it's sexy and badass at the same time. <laughs> um, I just have other things I was going to cover, but I keep choking. And I can't really think about what I was going to say. I wasn't even planning on doing a video for another couple weeks or something, but I don't know. I woke up this morning and it, I've had these things on my mind and I've been wanting to talk, rant, just get them out there in the universe, I guess. And this is my personal little video diary that people just happen to sit there and watch and laugh at me because I am kind of ridiculous sometimes. My life is ridiculous, but... At least it's interesting. It's not boring. I don't just go to work and come home and blah. That's it. No, my life is pretty interesting and I love and enjoy every second of it. Mostly every second of it. Of course, everybody has their bad moments. But it's the way you process the bad moments and the way you think that changes your whole outlook. It changes pretty much everything. So that's why I like to believe everything happens for a reason. You may not know why it is. Could be some random reason that you don't know for 10 years down the road. But eventually you're going to look back on almost every single situation and realize that it formed you into your who you are. If those events wouldn't have happened, you would not be the same person that is that you are today. Okay, and my dogs are starting to bark crazy, so it's obviously time to go. But until my next video, <laughs> bye guys.